find our way to any seat that feels kind of juicy this morning. I'm sitting in my super <laughs> morning. It's not morning anymore. In our Sukhasana shape here, crisscross applesauce. There's a pitter patter of feet heading my way. Starting to take a nice big in breath, in through the nose, lengthen through the crown of the head. And then on to that length, but exhale everything you do not need. So exhale 2020. <laughs> Inhale through the crown of the head. Maybe let the shoulders roll back and down. Exhale everything out. We'll take a few rounds of breath here to center and become present on your mat. So with each exhale, let go a little bit more of your day. Becoming present right here on the mat, letting everything else kind of take a back seat to these next 40 some minutes that we have together. Beautiful. And then go ahead and allow your eyes to open. We're going to create a little bit of space between our shoulder blades to begin with here. So extend your arms out to the side and then bring the left underneath the right. Bend the elbows. And if it's the first movement of your morning, you might just, or your day, I don't know why I keep thinking it's still morning. You're going to press the backs of the hands together. If you have a little bit more space to give, you might wrap at the wrists as well. And then once you get there, push the elbows out and away and up. So the elbows are even with the shoulders and then extend the arms. So the hands are right stacked over the um, elbows. So the end result is it's a nice gentle tug between the shoulder blades. It's an area that's kind of hard to get to usually. And then you can play around with how high or how low you need those elbows to go to get that sensation. Beautiful. Go ahead and release. Extend the arms around behind. We're just going to take it in the other direction. Interlace the fingers. Place the thumb side of your hands on your lower back and then squeeze the elbows back into chicken wing arms. And then that actually squeezes those shoulder blades together. And if you want a little bit more here, you're going to tuck the chin and create some length up the back of the neck. Nice. And then go ahead and release. We're going to take it to the other side. So this time it's right under left. If you followed me before, the right hand goes under the left, bend the elbow and maybe taking that double wrap. And now you might have to find a little bit different of a uh, extension of those elbows to get that same sensation because now we're starting to open up already. Starting to find some movement here. Just relax your jaw, relax your face. Beautiful. Go ahead and release. Again, sweeping the arms around behind, interlace the fingers, keeping the fist right on the lower back and squeezing those elbows together, maybe tucking the chin. Looking down towards your mat. Nice. And then go ahead and release. And let's find our way to our tabletop shape. So um, we're going to do a wrist stretch that we did yesterday, uh, but I'm really liking it these days. Hands are right underneath your shoulders. Knees are right underneath your hips. Keep your left fingers facing forward. Spread the fingers nice and wide and uh, go ahead and spread them so wide that like the webbing starts to stretch. And then take your right hand and place it down so that the fingers point towards your knee. So just flipping it. Um, and then if this is too much for you, so on my right hand, you know, I have that wrist injury that I've, I've been dealing with for a year and a half. Uh, you can turn those fingers so that they point out to the side if that feels better. 
but if you can get all the way back and then from here we're going to take some circles so just moving your shoulders so like you're creating a circle around the hands so you want the heels of the hands to line up and then just taking this around and then going back the other way And then go ahead and just spin that right hand forward, left hand comes back. And if you're super flexible, you can do both hands at the same time. I just like to do one at a time because then you can really focus on that one wrist. And take those circles. And then go back the other way. And don't worry if you have more mobility in one side than the other, it's not the end of the world. Perfect. And then go ahead and release. And then last one here. So I'll turn so that you can see me. Um, so the last one, you're going to take and place the backs of the hands on the mat so that your palms are facing up. So when you do this, uh, you can sit as far back into your hips as you need to, to kind of take the weight off. But if you can stack those shoulders right over and then you'll probably have a little, like you'll notice, I have a bend in my elbows. You're going to start to work those as straight as possible, but they probably won't go completely straight. And then from here, we're just really just trying to straighten those elbows, get a little bit of a stretch. And again, if you want to do one side at a time, you can absolutely do that. Good. And then go ahead and release, sit back on your heels and take some wrist circles forward and back. You can use your opposite hand to kind of just get some mobility to your little jazz fingers. And then we're headed back to that tabletop shape. So hands and knees, hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hips curl the toes under and then sit back into your child's pose. Once you get to your child's pose, you're going to be higher than normal. Round through the back, tuck the chin and create that nice little stretch. Toes are curled under here. Inhale, lean forward and take your uh, cow pose. So cat and cow, but we're going to rock back and forth. Exhale, rock back. Inhale to lift. It's a little dynamic movement here today. Exhale back, inhale to lift. And then last time, once you find your way to this child's pose, we're gonna push away from the hands and start to float the knees. So we're in that little crouching dog shape towards the back of the mat. Knees are lifted off the mat, heels float. You're pressing your body to your thighs. Once you find that length through the arms, you can start to lengthen out and pedal right foot and then left foot, bending the knees. Really working into all 10 toes here. Getting maybe some snap crackle pops there. Let your hips do their little side to side. We'll take three, last two, and then the last one. Come way up onto the toes, push away from the hands, hips go back towards the back corner of the room and then heels come down. From here, we're going to walk back. So taking your hands back to your feet, Finding your forward fold at the back of your mat, maybe the knees stay bent, and then just grab opposite elbows, head falls down to the mat. You can find a little side to side if that feels good. Nice. Release the hands to the mat, find a nice flat back, zip up. Bring those shoulder blades together. If the mat is too long or too far away, you can bring your shins to your hands to your shins. And then fold all the way down. Root to rise, sweep the arms nice and wide all the way up. Press palms together. And then hands to heart center. So we're gonna do a couple of those uh, down dog walkouts. 
like we did earlier this week. So go ahead and reach the arms all the way up, press the palms together, and then exhale, fold. From here, just walk your hands out your mat, right to your downward facing dog. So find your way to that down dog, press the heels towards the mat. We're going to stay here for two breaths. And then just to make it interesting, bring the feet up to the hands, so walking forward. And then sweep the arms nice and wide, root to rise all the way up, press palms together, and then exhale, fold. Plant those hands, step back into your right into your downward dog. Nice. So walking the hands back this time, walk, walk, walk. Inhale, root to rise all the way up, press palms together at the top, and then exhale down. On your inhale, you're using that in-breath to walk out to that down dog. Exhale, push the hips up and back, head is heavy. Inhale, walk the feet to the hands. So walking forward, root to rise all the way up. And then exhale down. One more time, all the way through, step back to the down dog. So it's one step back, press the hips back to the sky. Inhale, gather up your strength and then exhale, walk those hands back. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, float down. Inhale, walk it out. Down dog. Exhale, hips up and back. And then on this last one, if you're feeling frisky, you can hop forward or you can walk, coming all the way up to the top of the mat. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, root to rise, sweep the arms all the way up. Press palms together at heart center. So now that we're starting to warm up, we're starting to feel a little bit energized. Let's find our intention for the day, keeping your eyes closed, letting your shoulders relax, gripping into your mat. What is it that brought you to your mat? What is your intention here? Last big breath. Feeling that intention. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, fold. Inhale for that half lift. Let's find our way to a, a crescent lunge. So step the right foot back and then inhale all the way up. Find that nice high lunge, that crescent shape. Press the heel back on that right foot. Look up towards the hands. Maybe press palms together at the top. Nice, and then exhale, hands come down either side of that front foot. Keep that back heel lifted. Just send the hips back as you straighten that front leg. So your focus is now on that front leg. We're just working into a little bit of stretching before we move. Inhale back to that low lunge, bend the knee, walk the fingers just past the toes and send the hips down towards the mat. So really just finding a stretch here on this first round. Inhale, step forward, back into that forward fold. Root to right, sweep all the way up. And then all the way back down. Let me flush that out. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back, left foot. When you find your balance, inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Nice, hold here for a moment and get used to the shape. So if you have something shiny out in front of you to look at, it's really helpful. You can make sure your hips are both kind of even and facing forward. If you don't have anything shiny, you can bring your hands to your hips and kind of feel it out. And then exhale, let's go ahead and find that extension of that right leg, back heel stays up, just melt down over that front leg. If the floor is too far, you can bring your hands to the shin. Otherwise, we're just melting down. Okay. 
Inhale, bend into that right knee and lift the heart, drop the hips. Beautiful, go ahead and step forward, forward fold, out down over the legs, root to rise, sweep all the way up, press hands to heart center. We're going to go through that, adding on, inhale, lift, sweep the arms up, exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, on the exhale, stepping back with the right foot, find your way to that high lunge, reach the arms all the way up. So we're going to find that eagle arm that we did at the beginning. So wrap the right arm underneath the left and find those eagle arms here. Nice. You can hang out with the bind or you can release if it throws your balance off. It's going to pitch forward, reaching those elbows past the knee here. Keep the hips square. Nice. Unravel, unwind, reach all the way back up. And then exhale, straighten that leg, fold over that front leg. We're going to skip that second crescent. We're going to rock the hands forward, just outside of the big toes, and then step up, float that back leg, either into your supported warrior three, if you need the ground or the blocks, or if you have the space, you can come up into your warrior three, your hands right underneath the heart here in prayer. Working on our functional balance. It's winter. We like those one-legged standing poses for the ice. Inhale, we're going to stand all the way up, but bring that right knee with you to tabletop and then set it down. So just exaggerating that step as we come forward. Inhale, root to rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Let's step back, left foot. Reach the arms all the way up. Nice, you can hang out here. This is perfectly fine. Or you can find those eagle arms. Wrapping the left arm underneath the right this time. And then if you want, on the exhale, you can start to hinge forward. stretch here. Inhale, release, sweep the arms all the way back up, and then exhale, hinge and fold over that right leg. So now we're lengthening the hamstring, and then on our exhale, we're going to strengthen, we're going to float forward, finding our way to the either supported warrior three with the hands on the ground, or you're going to float the hands to heart center in that warrior three. I like to flex my foot. I feel like it helps me for balance here. Inhale, bring that knee into tabletop as you stand up. And then exhale, place both feet down and shake it out. Let's go through that one more time. Here we go. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, right goes back. Find your way, crescent, all the way up. Nice, right arm underneath the left for that eagle. Exhale, fold. All right, you can unravel the legs if you, or the arms if you like. Otherwise, if you want the challenge, keep the hands right where they are and find your way to that warrior three. So we're just floating that back leg. Again, that's optional, you guys. Inhale, we're going to lift up. Take that right leg with you, cross it over the left, and find your eagle both sides. Sit down, sit back, maybe wrapping the toes behind the calf on that left leg. Like how I tricked you into that? <laughs> Beautiful, go ahead and lift up, release, bring the arms behind you, interlace the fingers and fold. Ooh, shake that whole thing out. You can take a little side to side, bend the knees, open up the hips here, and then fingers come to the mat. Just in that forward fold. All right, second side, you know where we're going. Inhale, half lift. 
Exhale, step the left leg back, reach the arms all the way up. And then maybe taking the bind, left arm underneath, right? Sinking low, and hang out here. Exhale, hinge forward, this might be enough. Or if you want to keep going, you're gonna float that left leg off the mat. And then on your inhale, stand all the way up, bring that, oops, fall over, bring that left knee with you, bend into the right, and then maybe finding the double wrap. So even if you can't double wrap, you can still just squeeze the legs together, really working your inner thighs. The more you sit down and back, the easier it usually is to get that double wrap. Nice, go ahead and unravel, unwind. Reach the arms behind you, interlace the fingers and find that forward fold for release. Nice. Go ahead and bring the hands down to the mat. Inhale, half lift. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and step back, right foot, then left foot, high plank shape. Once you have your shoulders stacked over your wrists, let's take three breaths. Heels pushing way back. Zip up the belly. Shoulders to the hips are nice and long. If you need to take a breath here, you absolutely go ahead and take a breath here. You can drop the knees. You can find your way to child's pose. We only have one more inhale and one more exhale. And now the knees come down and sit back into your child's pose. Now we get a break. Go ahead to the mat. Bring your arms back by your heels. And let your shoulders be heavy. Melt over the front or over the legs. Take about three more rounds of breath here. Go ahead and reach your arms forward. Beautiful, curl those toes under. Find your way up and back, downward facing dog. Maybe pedal out your dog. Take a wider stance if that feels good. Whatever kind of feels juicy here. We're going to float the right leg up behind you. And then on the exhale, bring that thigh in towards your chest as you roll forward into a bonded charger, right? So knee to nose here, or knee to chin, or forehead to knee, whatever you, whatever your shape is, you're just rocking forward. And then inhale back, send that right leg out behind you, and then step it down. Left leg, lift knee to nose as you roll forward push away from the mat and then inhale up and back three-legged dog both feet on the mat right leg lifts step that right leg all the way up so same action thigh comes to your ribs step between the hands plant that left heel down right hand comes to your knee or right elbow to your knee and left arm reaches up so extended side angle here nice so hips are low, feet, right foot faces forward, left foot is at an angle. Let's reverse, left hand down the left leg, right arm up towards the sky, and then settle into your warrior two. I didn't plan this very well because my back's to you. Nice. Beautiful, both hands down either side of that front foot. In that back heel, three-legged dog. So you're just going to step that right foot back into your three-legged dog. If you're feeling frisky, you can open the hip, bend the knee. If you're feeling really strong today, you can take this into a wild thing where you just flip that dog. I'll hang out here and uh, three-legged dog with you guys. 
if you have your dog flipped, come back. This is where it's hard to not see. And then we're coming into a pigeon pose here. So right knee comes behind the right wrist. And then you're just going to spin the shin towards the short edge of your mat and start to come down in between. So in between your knee and your front knee, you're going to settle, you're gonna square off. First, walk your hands back and lift your heart. Take that little back bend here. And then start to lower onto your elbows. Let your head be super heavy here. If it feels good, you can walk your fingers long out in front of you and bring your forehead all the way to the mat. That's a much deeper stretch. Go ahead and walk your hands back by your shoulders, lift yourself up. And then the easy way out of this, we're going to slide over onto that right hip and sweep that left leg around in front and find your way to your Sukhasana, your easy pose here. So I'm coming to fire logs, stacking my left shin over my right. That's a shape that just works nicely for me as opposed to Sukhasana, but either one is right, crisscross applesauce or not. And then from here, bring your fingers to your hips, lift the heart up, take a big back bend here, press that left knee down as much as you're able, and then start to walk the hands diagonally forward. So now we're stretching a little bit into that left hip, so the second side. <laughs> Beautiful. Inhale all the way back up. So if you have old lady knees like me, you're gonna unhook your legs and sweep them out to the side, or you can roll over your legs. However you wanna get there, we're going to downward facing dog. And find your way back here. All right, my friends, left leg reaches up and back. We're stepping through between. So remember that thigh comes into the ribs, you roll forward, and then you place that foot down. If the foot doesn't get there, use your hand to help you. There's nothing wrong with that. And then tap that left heel, right heel down, left elbow to the left knee, and reach the right arm up towards the sky. Nice little snap, crackle, pop, hit, pose. Remember, we're not jumping into this left arm. In fact, you're so light on this bottom arm that you can move your elbow around. Inhale, let's reverse, right arm down, left arm up. And then find your way to warrior two, sinking into the shape. Nice, relax your shoulders, peel this right knee or left knee back, push into the right foot, and then find your way all the way down to the mat, Re uh, lift that back heel, either your three-legged dog here or your wild thing. So wild thing, you would tap those toes down and lift the heart up towards the sky. But if that's not for you today, you can hang out in your three-legged dog. Finding your way to that pigeon, left knee comes all the way forward and then sink down. So it's different from side to side, right? Your heel kind of judges how, or lets you know how intense the stretch is going to be. The further forward your foot is, the more intense. So you can bring that heel really close to your groin. That's okay. And then start to lower down, coming maybe to forearms or all the way to the mat. There's no wrong answer here. 
if you notice that this pose creates tension, see if you can back out somewhere. So maybe backing off the mat, maybe just staying up on your hands. Maybe bringing the heel closer to your body. Because you wanna find ease here. If coming all the way down to the mat isn't for you, then don't do it. Beautiful, starting to walk your hands back up. We're just going to sweep that right leg around and on top or in front. Take your way into this nice fire log pose and then start to hinge. So now we're working the right side, which has already been stretched. You might have a little bit more room here. You might be able to walk your forearms to the mat. Or maybe your forearms come to your shins. And then just go ahead and inhale, release. One more little bit of core work before we head down to the mat. Just sweep your legs around behind you, plant your hands, find your way to your table or to your plank shape. So your high push up. Hands are underneath your shoulders, feet are next to each other, heels are over your toes. We're just going to float the right toes off the mat. And without moving your arms or moving your body, try to pull the knee in towards your heart, your chest, your nose, tuck your chin, and then go ahead and step that right foot back. Same thing, slow motion, left foot floats, knee comes in towards your heart. See if you can do that without hiking your hips up or pushing yourself out of this shape, and then step back. And then three more each side, so right, step back, left, step back, right, step, left, step, right, back, left, back, and then it's going to feel amazing. You're going to lower your hips to the mat. Beautiful. And then come all the way down. Ooh Turn your head to one side, maybe stack your hands, put your forehead on top, and just melt down over the arms. Tiny bit of core strength. And then into a tiny bit of back strength. Fingers come next to your uh, next to your ribs, right underneath your shoulders, to up on your fingertips, place the tops of your feet on the mat, elbows back behind you, inhale, lift, head, heart, and shoulders. This is not a big, so you're not coming very high up off the mat. Push the hips towards the mat, lift the heart. So this comes from the back, it's not coming from the fingers. Last three two and then go ahead and lower down turn your head to one side melt down onto the mat they come very heavy even if you want to put your hands down by your side and bring your head all the way to the floor just depends on where you landed i guess whatever feels kind of good there If your hands aren't already under your head, go ahead and bring your left hand underneath your head. Look over towards your right shoulder, bend your right knee, and reach back and grab on to your toes, either from the inside, the outside, or the top of the foot. And then stretch through that quad, the thigh of the right leg.
go ahead and release the right leg without becoming a slingshot. Switching over towards the left, your head is on the right arm. Bend the left knee, pull the heel in towards your glute. Perfect. Go ahead and release that foot. And then we're just coming to our back. So however you'd like to get there, I'm just going to flip over. If you want to do all kinds of maneuvering, you're certainly welcome to. Find your way to your back. Pull both knees into your heart space. Take a nice little massage here. Rock and roll a little to the left, to the right. Put both feet back on the mat. And then let's see, so hip width, knees are bent. Your feet can be a little bit wider than hip width if that feels good. And then just let the legs fall over towards the left. So if you need some more, you're going to put the right foot on top of the left knee. Maybe you reach the arms out into a T or into cactus arms overhead. Beautiful. Go ahead and release. Find your way back to your back. And then we're just taking that twist over to the other side. Coming back through center, gathering the knees up into the heart space one last time. Maybe giving yourself a nice big hug here. And then releasing the right leg down the mat and then the left leg down the mat. Finding your way to your Shavasana shape, your final resting shape. Now letting go of your entire practice.
beginning to lengthen your exhales. Now starting to add movement to fingers and toes. Now making your way towards one side and pausing there, letting your head rest on your arm perhaps. Now finding your way to your comfortable seat. Once you find your way to your seat, we're going to spend several rounds of breath here, just being present with your breath. So let everything else melt from your mind. Perhaps using the mantra, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. Shaking off everything except for I am breathing in, I am breathing out. Now becoming more aware of your surroundings, starting to come back into your normal pattern of breath. Bringing hands to heart center if you choose, maybe bowing your head. Thank you for joining me on the mat this afternoon. Have a fabulous weekend. Namaste.